Hello there, it's Sandy, and I am not Bible journaling today. I'm just working on a sketch of an olive tree from the Garden of Gethsemane. Working from a photograph that I took when I was there in Israel in 2007, which I have figured out was the last time I took a vacation in which I did not do any work. I did not work. Can you believe it's been 15 years since I had a real vacation like that? I found myself jealous of other people who get to go to Hawaii for two, two weeks or whatever, or, you know, go see family for a couple of weeks and not do any work. And yet I am in full control of that and I have not done it. I've always found some way to combine work when I travel and I haven't gotten the rest that I need for many, many years. No wonder my brain is fried, right? So I'm going to leave links to a bunch of things in the doobly-doo, one of which is last week's video. So you can go watch that to hear more about why I'm not going to be Bible journaling weekly anymore. And who knows how often, but it'll, it'll be at some point. I just don't know when that will be. And why I'm closing the Facebook group. That's going to close later this evening. It's going to be archived. So people who are already members by the time it archives can go back into the photo gallery and look at all the references they want, all the photographs, just can't add comments and can't add more pictures to it. But I was planning on just letting that archiving go and not coming back here to do Bible journaling on this channel for a while. And then I was working on this and the Lord just said, hey, turn the phone on. So I turned the phone on. My camera is occupied, set up for another long-term project and I didn't want to move it. So you're just getting phone footage here of this drawing. But that brings me to the reason that I think the Lord said that I should turn the, turn the phone on, which is some questions that came up and often comes up on this channel when I've talked in the past about getting a message from the Lord that I wanted to journal. And it's one of those subjects I don't feel qualified to answer. I don't feel qualified to say, here's how you hear from God, because as far as I know, there's no recipe, there's no magic incantation, there's no pray this prayer and do this thing and stand on your left foot and hold your tongue just so and God will speak. That's not how it works necessarily. I had a number of experiences with the Holy Spirit before I understood that was what was going on. I was in mainline denominations where we didn't talk about the Holy Spirit. We didn't talk about any kind of relationship with him. Uh, we didn't, dis I didn't even know there was a baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that just kind of blew me away when I learned it eventually, because that made sense with some things that I had experienced in which I was doing something and out of the blue, I heard God. And the only thing I can tell you is that I knew it was God. It, it, in one case, was an audible voice, but in the other cases, was just a very strong impression, but in words, like I heard it inside my head as opposed to hearing an external voice. And I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what to do with it other than I knew it was God. A lot of denominations teach that there is no such thing as the baptism of the Holy Spirit or God doesn't talk to people that way anymore that all we have is the word and we have to just rely on that alone because he won't talk to us. And I have to tell you, those experiences that I had just out of the blue of God coming to me and speaking to me before I'd even asked him anything was enough to convince me that I wanted to hear from God more because I knew that that was him. It's not one of those situations where you wonder, is that my voice in my head? Is that the pizza I had last night? Is that just what I want to do or is that God? When I hear from him, I know with everything I know that that's him. It's, it's intangible. I don't know how to explain it, except that I've been baptized in the Holy Spirit and I, I know what his voice sounds like. The thing that helped me the most, I think, to hear from him more consistently was the teaching of Pastor Steve Shell when I was at his church, when he was still preaching, he's retired now, but he does have life lessons radio 
And there's a podcast where they're putting all the sermons that were at the church that I was at. They're slowly releasing those over time. So I'll put a link to that podcast as well. It's going to be a fabulous one for years to come because he was there for, I think, what, 27, 28 years or something. So lots of content coming your way if you're into podcasts. And he does a lot of teaching on the gifts of the Spirit. But what he spoke of one time, which really helped me a lot, was realizing that I had turned my radio off a lot. My, my radar was shut down. I was not open to hearing from the Lord because when I went to prayer, I was just doing all the talking. And I didn't know how to just sit and be and listen for his voice. It took a long time for me to get there because there's a lot of things I had to get out of the way. I had to get my my crazy to-do list out of the way when I went to prayer. I had to just learn how to put that aside so that my focus was entirely on just being with God, not begging him to speak. And that's part of my chatter that goes on. If if I really need to hear from him and I just say, oh, God, please just say something, say something, say anything, please just talk to me. That's just me talking. It's me putting words that out there. And I needed to learn how to just be and just to sit on his lap and be and exist and not worry about what the outcome was going to be, not worry about whether he was going to talk to me or not. Because he wants to talk to his kids. He wants a relationship like that with us. And we just need to be open to that in a way that I think it's really hard for pastors to teach us to do because it's experiential. It's not a, you know, read this Bible verse, say this prayer, you know, hocus pocus, there you go. It's just not how it works. But once you hear God's voice, Even one time, if you hear his voice and you know it's him, it is really easy to recognize him the next time because you're going to know what that, what that voice is, the truth of it, the love in it, the, the fatherly expression of, of the way he comes across is so tender that you'll crave it and you'll find yourself like, really learning how to sit with him and just listen. Because once I was able to start tuning out all that stuff, he was able to talk more. (laughs) I wasn't getting in his way when he had things to say to me. And it's not that I can't sit and chat with him. I still talk his ear off. But there are moments when it's just the two of us sitting there. No agenda. No, like, God, I need an answer on this thing just, hey, what do you have to say, dad? What do you want to talk about? And just letting him carry the agenda, not us. That's what works for me. And I honestly can't tell you how to get there. I would say some of Pastor Steve's books on the Holy Spirit, maybe that would be helpful. Finding a good teacher who understands the gifts of the Spirit. But my advice is to just learn to be with God and not be chattering all the time because you need to get that radar turned on so your ears are open so that you can hear whatever it is he's going to say. Because a lot of times he'll talk about something you didn't even have on your mind. He'll give me direction on something that, you know, six weeks ago I asked him about. (laughs) He'll suddenly be like, remember that thing? Oh, yeah. Okay. So getting my own agenda out of the way has been really important. And I don't really know how else to advise anybody because I, like I said, I am not an expert. I'm not a, I'm not a theological scholar. I can't be of help to you in that way, but it's vital, I believe, for Christians to hear from God for themselves because I think that's why a lot of people rely on having a pastor to do it for them. They want their pastor to be the one to listen to God because they don't, they don't know how they don't want to sit and listen. They're afraid of what God might say. But let me tell you, when he really does speak, even if he's disciplining you, he does it with great love. 
So I am going to close out this video by saying thank you to everybody who has been part of the Bible Journaling Made Simple Facebook group, especially Lena, who has been a huge help as moderator. She's been a rock star. And invite all of you, if you want to go follow my other adventures over on my other YouTube channel, I have a link to that down below, and my blog, my social media, and all that stuff. There will be some Bible journaling incorporated in some of that in coming months. I don't know exactly where, but I'm going to try to see if I can get more Bible journaling out to more people who don't know Jesus. So that's going to be one of the ways I'm going to try it. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you again sometime. I don't know how long it'll be before I'm back on this channel, but I will see you whenever that day comes. In the meantime, be blessed and go listen for God. Bye-bye.